Yeah, so today I'm a magician, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think to do a, a Rails app like in two weeks is yeah, amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we we spent like eight weeks building one, and two weeks is really unbelievable. Um, so, huh? So Every day, day, yeah. Still, yeah. Um, so, I'm one of the tech ladies. How should I do this? <laughs> So um, today I'm just going to uh, talk about a feature that we have learned during the process of um, uh, this, the eight weeks building uh, an app for an NGO that is like used in real life. And this, is, and this touches a bit on what Doxy was talking about just now, like how you associate different models together. So in this, today, we're going to the zoo. Okay. So, hmm. I don't know what I call, I'm not sure why I call it cabinet, but imagine a zoo and then they keep the animals and in a, in a cabinet. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just gonna give you a, a warning. This is not gonna be very like um, technical. It's gonna sound like a game or something. Like you know, it's very abstract. I'm trying to, I, mean, I was kind of assuming that uh, people here like um, a lot of people are starting out. So this is very use case. Yeah. So imagine if this is a zoo and then uh, the zoo has many cabinets. You look at the animals at. Um, and so each cabinet can only keep one uh, animal, otherwise you know, they start eating each other. And then each uh, animal can belong in multiple cabinets. Yeah, so for example, in this case, um, you have three rabbits in the C area, and then like, different animals at D. So um, for those who are, are not so much into like, programming yet, like, uh, each cabinet belongs to animal, and then each animal has many cabinets. And that's how you draw the association between these two models, cabinet and animal. Yeah, so in this um, case, this is a zoo with animals only, right? So what if you, I'm oh, sorry, yeah, so you can call, you can find out what animal is in that cabinet by calling the instance of a cabinet, then dot animal, because of this association, association that you wrote, belongs to animal. And then for each animal, each instance of an animal, at animal, you can find out which cabinets they belong to by calling it like dot cabinets. And that's also because you have wrote, written this has many cabinets over here. And okay, but you know, in the zoo, uh, they decided to in introduce some plants. So in each cabinet, instead of having uh, an animal, you can you can have a plant as well. But you know, either one animal or one plant. So you know, okay, you organize it this way first. So in in this situation, um, then how do you link an, a cabinet with either an animal or plant? And you know, you can move it around sometimes like this. So in a, in a way, uh, each cabinet is, has to be linked to sometimes an animal and sometimes a plant. Yeah, so then you draw your association this way using um, what they call um, an active record. Uh, so active record as associations provide you with this method. Um, if, you, if you use, uh, like, when you do your migrations, you write uh, like T references, um, and you use this word here, occupy, uh, it can be occupiable, can be, uh, anything like you know, occupied, and then you call it like polymorphic truth. It's like a, uh, an attribute. I'm not sure whether I'm using the right word. Yeah. Then it will recognize that in the model cabinet, they will have a foreign I sorry foreign foreign key called occupiable ID and a string occupiable type. So in this instance, you can see that like, plants and animals are actually two are very two different things because um, they are like attributes of the plant, like you know whether it's green, whether it's flowering, and then like you know or animals that you you, call, you count how many legs they have or and how, how do you classify them, reptiles or whatever it is. Yeah. So in this case, when two models are very have very different attributes, you don't put them together and then associate it with cabinets. And then in this occupable ID and occupable type. Occupy occupiable type is a string <coughs> with, like, uh, with a capital A animal or capital P plant. So when you set, that, um, you set this attribute to like, say plant, it will look for a plant with the occupiable ID, occupiable ID, like say one. So the first plant, sorry, sorry. so occupiable type is like capital P plant. And if I, occupiable ID is one, you'll look for in the plant model, the first data in uh, the plant model. So in this case, cabinets can take up like, can, can be linked to two different models. Yeah, and then the association will look like this, where um, the cabinet belongs to occupiable, polymorphic true, and then um, an animal can 
have many cabinets, but this time linked to S occupiable, and it goes back to the cabinet over here. And I think a lot of it is like um, how you write things and like uh, recognize the patterns and all that. So this is just uh, part of the syntax. Yeah. So in so each cabinet. So, so instead of like before. Uh, when each cabinet can only have animals, here you can have either plants or animals. And then when you, you previously, when the cabinet only can have a, an animal, you call it like add cabinet dot animal. But this time it's associated to occupiable instead. So when you call add cabinet dot occupiable, the, the data retrieves either a plant or animal, depending on what occupiable type is. And then with uh, that particular animal itself, if you call add, add animal cabinet, then it will retrieve the, the what cabinets are, is this particular uh, animal can be found in. Similarly for plants as well. So the Rails console, um, if you you can test actually, uh, yeah, you just use the Rails console to test like you know how this data um, is like uh, saved and retrieved, and you just to find out how to retrieve all this information. You can test your methods over here. So say for instance you have a plant, uh, there's a rose, uh, that's the first. So you save it in the variable plant, and then you call which plant cabinets and to find out which cabinet they are found in. And in, th in this case, the array returns nothing, so it's not found anywhere. If you do like plant cabinets dot create, it's, uh, it will create a new record of a cabinet called B two, and then it will return like um the uh it will return yeah it will return instead of nothing a record here that says, um, okay, this is the creation of the cabinet itself with the name B2 and the occupable ID 1, which is this one here, and uh, with the type plant. And then if you go back again to look for plant.cabinets, uh, um, it will return you an array with the cabinet that you just assigned it to. And if you create it again, like do this again with say like B3, then there will be two records here. And okay, so that last but there's another way of retrieving the information because you know it's linked both ways, right? Has many and then belongs to. So with the last cabinet just now that you created, cabinet dot uh, cabinet dot last, and you do cabinet dot occupiable, it will retrieve that plant ID with the name rose there. And here it's not an array, but um, it's it's, it's a, the record of the plant itself because um, a cabinet can only have one plant. And then if you call the attribute of this occupiable, which in this case, you know, refers to a, a, a data point of a plant, it will get you rows here. And if it's, uh, like it's green, this occupiable, which is a plant, will return you true because roses are, is a green plant. Um, okay, say for instance, you have a cabinet 12. And right now, the cabinet is empty. Okay, that's why you see like occupable, occupable is new and type is new as well. And then um, and you assign uh, animal to the last animal. And then for the, the cabinet you just defined in on top, you update with the occupiable um, attribute animal, which refers to this snake here. And then you update the, that particular cabinet itself with the snake. And you call it name and the snake will come out here. So, um, yeah, so maybe I'll do a little demo of what it looks like on a... Okay, so it's just a very simple view here. Okay, so if like, the cabinets are arranged like this and you realize, okay, the top level should be all plants instead of like, you know, a, a rose and a tiger. So or maybe the top row you want it just to be like um, just at plants, right? You can select a plant here instead, and then you save the changes. And this, and then you can assign like you know where things will be like this. So you, know, you can see all the plants are on top, and then all the animals are below, and that's how a cabinet takes like is linked to a different model, either plant or animal here. I realize it's not a very good example <laughs> with the animal and plants thing. Okay, so um, there's a feature 
that Connect was supposed to present on and this single table inheritance. Um, so I was, uh, I was just going to touch a bit more on um, what's the difference between single table inheritance and polymorphic associations. So in single table inheritances, um, okay, there's a lot of words, but let me just put it in like more layman terms. Um, usually, the, why you use single table inheritance instead of polymorphic associations is when you know you're referring to the table itself. It's nothing going to do with associations, yeah, on its own. So, like for example, a user, a user can be a customer, a seller, or like say admin. So, um, it's kind of like defining different roles. Yeah, but they share the similar attributes because they're all people. So, like say, um, the user can have an email address, password. Um, but say, for example, admin has certain attributes that you know they are, uh, they are like specific to them. But generally, they say uh, they share similar attributes and overlapping ones. Not necessarily all the attributes. Um, not they don't necessarily have the, all the same attributes, but they have a lot of overlapping ones. And that's when, in the like, use case, you use single table inheritance. But for polymorphic associations, it's more so of how the different models link to each other. Yeah. So for example, um, you have a calendar and you have an appointment, and you can link the appointment to a person in the, your database or a company in your database. And a company and person takes up very different attributes, right? Like, you know, a company, uh, maybe your market capital, and then the person, maybe you can market capital as well, but, um, you know, it's more, uh, the, the attribute will be different. So in that use case, um, you wouldn't put, like, companies and models together because the attributes would be, like, totally not overlapping at all. Yeah, so that's it. Yeah. I'm not sure whether it was magic or just confusing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I see the table again? What's this false cascade thing? False cascade? Hmm? Like the database table. This one? Yeah. False cascade. Oh, um, so, when you write your migrations, uh -huh. you define what attributes are there in the table. And then you run like readdb migrate yeah. to translate it to like cool <laughs> what <stuff. laughs> yeah cool stuff. <laughs> but you can see like you know the different um, attributes that each um, model has in like a long list and all that. Uh, so this is just what it will look like on in the schema. Yeah, which tells you all the what what models you have and what attributes <coughs> those models have. Yeah. Any so occupiable mm. is actually not a table, right? Is it a table? No, it's not. Yeah, so it's... It, it, okay. I can't find the scientific word for it or like, uh -huh. like the programming word for it. But it, it's kind of like you imagine... <laughs> imagine linking like this... Um, this uh, models through something else. So it's like kind of the medium or vehicle. <laughs> yeah, to draw the relationship. Yeah, so like the cabinet is linked to the occupiable. And then the occupiable is linked to animals. And I think it's clearer when you see it this way. Yeah, because it goes like, like this way. Yeah. So it's like a table, but not a table. It's like an imaginary table. No, no, no. The, that's, that's not a table at all. It's kind of like a name that you call it by. So you can link it to another table that has that name. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to go on YouTube, right? <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Cascade. Yeah, yeah, if I have a problem, I don't get it. And what's the false cascade? So if I take away the false cascade, I, I it will still work. False cascade is in every app, right? Does it come with it? Or is it something that you type in? I, wait. Whoa. I think false cascade is in, is in, it's nothing special, is it? Does it come with it? <laughs> So the answer is no. Yeah, I don't. I'm, not, I'm quite sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. It's about it's a database thing. So um, I'm not sure about Ruby. What cascade means is that because you got three tables, right? Or oh, which the data thing. If you put cascade, if you delete the data from one table, you delete the, the one that's linked as well. Oh, if you don't sense. delete, that means you get some data that's like stuck because okay. if you delete one side, the other side, the that's linked like get stuck. Uh, so if you put cascade, you will delete the one that's linked. When you when you create a table, do you you create the migration? Do you use my references? Yes, I did. Okay. 
So yeah, it, so creates, it, creates a foreign, it creates a foreign key constraint. You got, mm. you got a foreign key constraint which links these two tables together. So yeah. if you delete one without deleting the other or removing uh, yeah. the links, it will, it will prevent you from deleting it. So if you delete a record, say from animal, uh, it will prevent you from deleting it if the cabinet has the animal. Yeah. But I think yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. So if you, if you I, I need to. For so example, if you read uh, in cabinet one, the fun maybe let's say flower and then once you delete one, then the flower all goes together. You cannot just delete flower without delete other one. Okay. So the cascade links all three together when you delete oh. all three. The one record that links on into three tables will be deleted together. Mm. If, you, if you are missing one in the record, you cannot just say I want to delete. So the data in one of the tables and without deleting the other two. Because of this, it falls the results. So, like, the reference of the point is nothing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Does anyone have any other questions? No? No? Yes? No? Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. The use of the the last slide, SDI and What's the use? Okay. Okay. Um, let me see. Yeah, so I was saying, um, okay, the thing is, like in this case, I was, I was saying like with uh, polymorphic associations, right? you are trying to associate like one table with two. Yeah, but for single table inheritances, right, it only refers to one, one table. It's nothing got to do with what it relates to. Yeah, so for instance, I was saying like um, a user here, like a user, user here can be like all of us. And then like, you know, you, oh, like maybe a group of us has like specific role, like, I, um, like she's admin, and then the rest of us are all like uh, customers. I mean, I know sometimes like, you know, you just use uh, like, uh, you define a role, right? And then you maybe use an integer. But instead, right, you can, uh, if you use, if you call her admin, and maybe there are like a whole group of admins here, and then like the rest of us are like customers, it actually allows you to do uh, certain features. Like you can put admin dot like admin like capital A admin dot all, so it retrieves like information from that. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You have two fields, you have the ID and the type. So the type actually identifies what table you are looking for, the ID uh, identifies the record ID, to which record to retrieve. So uh, use polymorph polymorphic associations when you actually uh, want to interact with, so let's say for example you have an invoice class, uh, and you want to interact with what you call a billable. So a billable can be a company, it can be an individual, it can be whatever, but you're interacting with it in the same way. So you use this, uh, use a polymorphic association to say that uh, I can put in, uh, be it a company, be it a, a, a person or whatnot, into this uh, association, and I will interact with it the same way as available. Uh, but STI is, let's say you have, uh, you have different models, but they more or less share most of the attributes are the same. So you have additional columns to store attributes that uh, maybe one model has that the other doesn't. But since most of them are overlapping, it isn't necessary to split it up to multiple models. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can actually um, have different models, but all referring to the same table. So you save a lot of database space as well, depending on how you implement it. Uh. So the use cases are quite different in this case. So uh, Cornet was supposed to cover STI, but she wasn't here. That's why uh, there might be a bit of confusion. Okay. So that's not limited to database, right? Uh, for inheritance, it's actually done during runtime as an object. So you don't necessarily use a database. I mean, when you overload the attributes of a particular class, you're not actually extending the database table itself. So it's actually stateless. Uh, so you don't know STI. So for STI, uh, let's say you have multiple models, but um, for, for example... But at the end of the day, it's not stored in the database. Uh, yes, it's not. Yeah, it's not. So your explanation is a bit of a is the overloads are not going to be stored in data because we are talking about classes 
Um, yeah, I think all this uh, is very healthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're yeah. all beginners, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I come from a background that's like not te- non technical at all. Mm-hmm. So only been doing for three months. So yeah. thank you. I think it's a lot of peer learning and all that. Yeah, and th- you should tell me that I'm wrong if I'm wrong because I, I should know now then later. Yeah. yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>